Welcome to another InMotion hosting video tutorial. My name is Arnel Custodio and I will be guiding you through the Stackable plugin for WordPress. Stackable extends the Gutenberg editor in WordPress so that you have more options for building beautiful and functional pages. The plugin also gives you control over each element you can add that is not available in the default Gutenberg blocks. Gutenberg is the default WordPress visual editor that has been integrated as of WordPress 5.0. Many options in Stackable are only available after upgrading the plugin, but they also give you many free options. We will be demonstrating how to use the plugin using the blocks that come with the free version. You will first need to install the plugin and it's pretty simple. Log in to your WordPress administrator dashboard, hover over or click on plugins, and then click on add new. Next, type in Stackable in the keyword field in the top right corner. After you hit enter, you'll be able to see the plugin listed as one of the new ones that you can install. Click on the Install Now button. After it's finished installing, it'll turn into an Activate button. Click on the Activate button. Once the plugin has been installed and activated, the first thing you'll see is an update option that basically requires that you install a plugin. You can skip this part if you want, or you can install the plugin as you wish. Once you've finished the installation of the plugin, you're going to notice that Stackable has added a few things to your WordPress installation. Number one, it's going to add something to your menu, and there's a Get Started section, which is pretty new for the plugin. And when you look at that Started screen, or Getting Started screen, you'll see Getting Started, which is the first screen here, Settings, Documentation, Contact Us, and an option for going to their premium version. Now, Stackable was added as an extension of the Visual Editor in WordPress. And basically, it lets you go into the pages or posts and then add different options there or different elements. So we're going to go ahead and add a new post so that you can see what's been added to the interface. So here I'm in a brand new post, and you can see that there's a design library here for Stackable. There's also an option for the settings for Stackable here in the top right corner. If you click on, like you're going to add a new block, you can see the different purple blocks here that have been added into the menu of your blocks. And these are all from Stackable. So if you click on one, you'll see that there's an option here for, for the block. So you can add its, its content. And then to the right hand side, you'll see all the different things that you can do for that particular block. Now there are a lot of blocks in here. So for this particular tutorial video, we're only going to go through a few of them just to show you the general options that you can do for every single block that Stackable presents. First, let's go back to the Getting Started screen from Stackable, as this gives a pretty good overview of what you're going to have, and then we're going to look at the settings as well. So at the Getting Started screen, and you can always go back into Settings and then go to Stackable, and it's an option that you can select to go back to it. And here you can see what I was just showing you in the post section, where you can add by block type in the design library, and then they talk about where the block types are. And again, like as I was showing you, when you click on the plus sign, you can see all the different added blocks from Stackable. And then they talk about their design library. And this is a pretty good thing because if you're trying to build a website pretty quickly, their design library kits, basically they're, they're similarly designed blocks and pages that you can add immediately and then have a uniform look to your, to your pages for your website. Now you can also go into the styling area and you can change what's on the blocks. And this is what we're gonna demonstrate with a couple of these. And then if you scroll down further, you can see the different things that you can do. And again, we will show this here when we look at a particular block. And an example here is you can change the colors, you can change the way in terms of the, the heading settings and the fonts that are being used. And then they have different resources at the bottom and they have a good community that you can join to get more help from people who've been using Stackable. They have their own documentation as well, a blog, and direct support. So when you go into the settings section, the first option you're going to see are notifications. And notifications starts off with the pop-up that comes up and says, please buy our premium version. And you can actually turn it off, which is very convenient. You can also turn off their requests for ratings, which again is very nice that they do this. In the next section is the icon libraries, and this is for symbols and different fonts that the Stackable uses. And right now, in order to use this section, you actually need to upgrade. 
For the role manager, again, this is a premium version, but basically it locks the block inspectors for different user roles. So for the global settings section, this is used when your theme that you've used for your WordPress installation is not quite working well with Stackable. And here you can tweak it a little bit so that you can make it try to work better with the theme. And here you can see that you can force typography styles, which by default is not forced. The next section is for all the different blocks that you can add from Stackable and you can enable them or disable them. So you may have multiple types of extensions for Gutenberg and they may have a better block. So if you don't wanna use that particular block in Stackable, so you have so many to choose from, then you can disable them. Or if you decide that you only wanna use a set of particular blocks, then this is an, an area where you can go in and disable or enable a block. You can also look at these individual blocks and look at a demo for each one so that you can see how they are used. And you can see there's quite a few blocks here. At the very bottom is the other settings and it starts off with show go premium notices, which is not checked. And then don't show help video tooltips and load version one block style sheet for backward compatibility. So if there are issues again with having your theme work with uh, stackable, this might be an option that you wanna check. So let's go ahead and dig in and take a look at a block that you can add from Stackable and see the options that you can change for that particular block. And they give you quite a few options. So we're gonna go ahead and add the accordion block, which is the first one that you can see when you go to add a block here. And if you click on an accordion block, basically what it does is it hides text that you can add. So you can have a, a lot of text that's just not visible until someone clicks on a part of the block and then it appears, and that's the accordion block. It's very useful for long descriptions or explanations that you just don't want to clutter your page or post with. So this is a very useful block. When you use this particular block, you can edit the title and you can also edit the text that you're hiding. And then on the right hand side where you can see the properties of that block, you have options to make changes to it. So when you look at blocks for stackable, they give you three areas where you can change the behavior of a block or the way it looks. And there's a layout option, a style option, and then they have global settings at the top as well. And you can go back and forth between these by just clicking on the icons in the top right hand corner. But what we're gonna start with is the layout option. And a layout again, is just basically how the text is going to appear or how that block is going to appear. And they give you a couple different options here. And here you can see there's a plain one. And when you look at the block on the left-hand side, you can see that there is no standout for that block. That It basically is just blending in with the rest of the page. And if you go to basic, you can see that it does give it a different look so that it does stand out from the page. If you go further down, you'll see designs. And here you'll see the options that you have for your designs. Like many of the blocks here, you're gonna find that some options in the block are going to be locked because you need to upgrade to the premium version. So you can see that there are three total design layouts for this block, and two of them are premium, but they're locked, and the one that's free is the only one that you can use. If you scroll down a little further, you'll see the different layouts that you can add, and they're all labeled as premium, or this one, this is not labeled at all, which is the one that you can use. Now let's take a look at style for that block. When you click on the style options here, you can see it starts off with a general section, and here you can close adjacent on open. You can open at the start, so you can have it open before anyone clicks on it. And you can also change the direction of the arrow. You can change the alignment here, the way the text is aligned in the block. And then the next section is the container. And the container allows you to change the background, you can have a border around it. So if I were to select a border here, and if you were to change the border radius, you can see the changes appear on the left-hand side here as you drag it. You can also have a shadow or outline for the block. And all these changes are live. As you go through them, you can see them appear on the block on the left-hand side in the editor. You can always reset these particular options here with the reset button. And the next thing is the spacing. And the spacing actually has a tooltip, which is pretty convenient here. If you click on that tooltip, it'll show you 
the different things that you can do with that particular block. So here you can see that it's spacing the different elements of that block. And you can change the padding, you can change the title, and the next thing is for the title itself. And here you can change the different types of title tags that it is. So if it's an H4, H3, or H2, or even an H1, you can change it here. You can change the typography, which means you can change the font. And you can see all the different options here when you click on that. The other thing that you could do with the title section is change all the colors. So if you were to change the color of the text for that, this is the section that you could do that in. If you want to have your own color, you can always go to custom colors and the colors would be something that's outside of the one set by the theme that you're using. Again, there's an, an option for alignment here. And one of the options you might see or notice here are the different types of appearance or the different types of screens that are going to be used on how the text will appear on that screen. So. If I were on a desktop, you can change the alignment to, to be left justified, or if I were on a tablet, you can change it to be centered, or even on a phone. So you can change the behavior per the type of device that it will appear on. This is part of the responsiveness that's being allowed for, or being set for this particular plugin. Finally, you have an option for the arrow, and the arrow allows you to change the size of it, and you can see how large it got when I dragged it, and then the color of it. The other section that you can adjust in the block is an advanced section. If you click on advanced, you will see a general section, block spacing, responsive, and advanced. Now, the general section here, you can see that the block HTML tag here can be adjusted and you can choose how it's set. And then there's also an opacity setting and the Z index. And both the opacity and the in Z index is, a, is adjustable per the screen type that you're you're trying to have people view your your page on or your post on. And if you look at the block spacing, you can again see a tooltip here. And it tells you again what it exactly does for that particular section. But you can also see very visually how the spacing can be adjusted. Each one of them are set on sliders or you can actually set values. And they are again responsive based on what you what screen you want to add it to, and you can set it by pixels or percentage, and that would also help you gauge how you want to change your your spacing. The responsive section allows you to select what will appear on the screens that are viewing your site. So you can actually hide on a desktop, tablet, or a mobile phone or a mobile device. These particular settings will allow you to choose how the elements of your poster page will appear on a specific device. The advanced tab is the same thing as when you look at any other block, you can set up an HTML anchor here and you can add additional CSS classes. Now let's take a look at the global settings and the global settings really apply to everything within your site in terms of the, the blocks that are being used by Stackable. And they also apply to all the blocks in general. So if you have other blocks as well, they will apply. So if you want to set particular colors, then you can set that as well. And you can also say that you only want to use stackable colors, or you can also decide to use different colors than what's available from that theme. And the other useful thing is the global typography, where you can set the fonts and the heading settings for all the different types of text that you can use within your website. And again, you can see here that you can apply typography styles to stackable and native blocks only, or you can choose to say stackable only or stackable and all other blocks. So the global settings are applied across the entire website, not just your particular post or page that you're working on. So let's look at another block so that you can see the differences when you look at the different blocks within stackable. Not all the options will be the same when you look at a different block. So if I look at the block quote and I add, add it here, and I look at the options here under style or under advanced, you're going to see an option like quotation mark, which wasn't in the last particular block because it didn't have a quotation mark. The options that you have per each block for the layout, the style, or the advanced section, they'll differ depending on the block type that you're using. So the context of the block will be important 
on what you can do. And also the options that you'll see, like for the premium options and the available free options will also differ. From block to block, you'll need to take a look and see whether or not you want to upgrade to the premium version or use the free options that are available for you. But it'll be very clearly marked when you can't use the option because it's a premium version. Finally, let's look at the design library that Stackable gives to you. So if you click on design library here, you'll see this window pop up, which shows you the design that they're using for each of these pages. You can actually select a particular design UI kit, or you can choose block designs. The UI kit allows you to select a specific style, and then when you look at it, it'll apply immediately to the page. Like I selected the particular header here, and then you can see that it showed up immediately. Now, a lot of these UI kits will have multiple blocks that have the same color design, the same kind of motif, so that you can match what you're going to display on your site. And this helps you to quickly build your site by having elements which are alike and match up together. It's like puzzle pieces that you're putting together that match up. So the block options for Stackable can be done through the UI kit, or you can select individual blocks and then kind of mix and match them. Let's take another look at the Stackable Design Library. When you look at the library, it defaults to the UI kits, and then you, you can select block designs as we were talking about earlier. If you notice when you look at each one of them, if you look at the capital one, you will see how each kit is put together and how they all match together. And you can add different elements of, of a page or a post and then matched up together. You'll find that most of these options within the Stackable Designer Library will be available to you unless they're labeled as premium. Here's an example of a UI kit where all of it, actually, in this case, are set to premium. And you won't be able to use this unless you purchase the premium upgrade. Same thing goes with the block designs. And here you can, again, mix and match. But you'll find that quote types, in this case, where you have premium ones, where they appear a certain way, and then you have free ones, which are not labeled premium. And that's the WordPress plugin called Stackable. It's an extension of the WordPress Visual Editor. It allows you to quickly build and design pages of a particular design and allows you to have a lot more control than you'll have from the default blocks that are given within the editor. Thanks again for watching this InMotion hosting video tutorial. We hope you liked it. If you did, please give us a thumbs up below and subscribe to our channel. Thanks again for watching and have a great day. Check out our InMotion Hosting Support Center for help with your website. We provide thousands of step-by-step -step guides, videos, and much more to lead you towards making your online project a successful one. You can find us at www.inmotionhosting.com support.